So Terry Wogan, great to see you. Thank you, Matt. Before we start, can I have the Sir Terry Wogan seal of approval on the clock? Of course. It, it brings back memories of a, a free gift we used to give on Wake Up to Wogan called the Woodwhack, the Wake Up to Wogan alarm clock. And this would certainly get you up in the morning, wouldn't it? It certainly would. And I could do with something like that, because quite often the old alarm clock doesn't oblige. <laughs> and I, have, I find myself dashing out of the house at the last minute, desperate. Right, we've got to start. There's only one rule. Hmm. There's absolutely no swearing. Oh. OK, well, I'll go now. Then. <laughs> right, here we go. You can count us down, Sir Terry. Good. Here we go. Two, one, zero. Sir Terry, you have been married 44 years and very much still in love. Uh, who told you that? Because that's a foul <laughs> and contemptible lie. No, it's absolutely true. Um, my wife, in her time, was known as the luckiest woman in Ireland <laughs> and is now and has been for many years one of the luckiest women in Britain and Europe. <laughs> Would she say the same thing? Uh, no, she wouldn't. But she'd probably take the other view. Now, do people tend to address you as sir? No, I, I don't try and encourage that. Um, people do. And I mean, why not? The Queen was good enough to make me a sir, so I'm, I'm happy to be called one. But I, I tend to cleave toward the Michael Caine uh, edict, which is that he doesn't expect anybody to call him sir, but when anybody sends him a letter addressed to Mr. Michael Caine, he throws it in the waste paper basket. <laughs> <laughs> now, you laugh a lot on your show, on your radio show. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's the only reason I get up in the morning. It isn't for the money, and it isn't because it's as black as your grandfather's outside in the winter, particularly. But it's because of the fun. I mean, I do come to work with a song in my heart. Have you ever completely lost it on the show? Uh, only when, uh, on one occasion, well, I, not completely. I lose it nearly every morning for long periods, but I only really lost it for a really long time, probably about a half an hour, when uh, my former producer, the great and lovely Paul Walters, who's a very dear friend, when he broke wind <laughs> on air. I mean, I've never heard anything quite like it in my life. And uh, all was silence for a while and, and just sort of suppressed laughter and hysterical <laughs> shouts from all over the place. And in fact, it became a little um, a moment of, of great uh, radio, great radio moment because uh, Chris Evans, had heard it and recorded it and continued to play it for many years. Which have you preferred, television or radio? There's no, uh, they're completely different things. I love doing television when I'm doing television. I love doing radio when I'm doing radio. Uh, radio, in a sense, gives more satisfaction because you can do more with it. You know, television just takes away uh, the ability to think or takes away the imagination. It provides the pictures for you. So you don't have to think, you don't have to listen. Whereas radio, you have to concentrate a little bit on what's being said, though I don't. Very many people concentrate on what I'm saying. What do you think is the secret to getting the best out of an interviewee? I think uh, the secret of getting the best out of an interviewee is to probably ask the right kind of questions. Am I right asking the right kind of questions? No, you failed Just abjectly. <laughs> what are your hobbies? Um, I sit around a lot. I'm very sedentary and extremely lazy, and people seem to think that I work very hard when I don't. I haven't had a proper job since I left the bank when I was about uh, 12, just after the Peloponnesian War. And so <laughs> I, I, I'm not qualified to talk about working for a living because I don't ever feel as if I had. But that's because I'm lucky enough to be doing something I really love. As you say, you started off life as a banker. Mm. Bankers have come in for a bit of stick recently. Do you feel any sympathy for them? Not at all. There was a list made in one of the papers of the various people who, are, who have made a mess of things in the bank, and uh, it just said, what's the difference between all these people and Terry Wogan? You see, Terry Wogan's the only one with a banking qualification. <laughs> I'm not saying I could have done any better, but I certainly wouldn't loan money, uh, you know, 100% of money to people who haven't got any money themselves. That, that was the preposterous part of it. Can we talk Eurovision? Uh, no. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Where did you watch it this year? I watched it in the presume of my family for the very first time in 35 years, or however long I've been doing it. I watched it for the first time with Helen, my wife, and it was extraordinary. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I don't think, it's a bit like the Beijing Olympics. I think the Russian, the Moscow Eurovision can never be excelled in terms of spectacle and, and sheer uh, brilliance of production. It was magnificent. Any regrets giving it up? No. Um, yeah, well, I suppose, yeah, it was lovely to do, and I had great fun doing it. I, I think Graham did a great job, and I, I don't mean that sycophantically. I thought he did a great job, and 
good luck to dear Lloyd Webber because, you know, he stuck his neck out and came fifth and that's fine. I'm pleased to say I delivered myself of a, of a speech to the EBU in Lucerne on the week before the, the EBU being European Broadcasting Union. Just so everyone knows. Exactly. And they um, go oh, nearly, it's out, timing. nearly it's out of time. <laughs> so um, I said what, what I thought was wrong. Uh, they didn't change it because of me, but at least they changed the voting and it's made the whole thing. They've thro it's thrown it open wide. Can we talk about golf before we finish? Yes. You're a bit of a star, aren't you? I am indeed. I sank the longest pot ever seen on television. <laughs> I think subsequently somebody called Tiger Woods has beaten me. British and Irish Lions, can they win? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over, Terry. Sir Terry, it's all over. Thank Great you, Matt. Great to see you. Great pleasure.